Hello and welcome to today's rendition of Moto News. I've got a few stories, both for Supercross and MXGP. They should be marked on the timeline of the video, so if you're not interested in one story, you can scroll right to the one you want to watch. All right, in today's video, we'll be looking at Aaron Plessinger, his Seattle finish. That's kind of his comeback after a rough past few races. Uh, and then he's going to talk about how he feels that he can still be in the points battle. Then uh, we're going to look at Nate Thrasher. He had a bike problem in Seattle that led to his poor 10th place finish. So that cleans the air of, or clears the air, sorry, of what issues could have been there, whether it was the injury or what. And then onto the MXGP side of things, we just talked about Rowan Van der Moestdijk yesterday and where he could possibly be going after leaving Fantic. Well, we have a lead to which team he might be going for, and it is another factory team. And then finally, we're going to look at Tim Geiser talking about the 2025 Honda CRF 450 prototype after the MXGP of Spain. He had some things to say about it, so we'll look into that. All right, before we get into the news, I got to tell you about my sponsor, Blood Lubricants. Blood has premium oils and lubricants for everything from moto to basic engine oil for your daily driver. They got premium racing oil. They've got chain lube. They got a whole bunch of stuff. They even have an upgraded oil. I think it's called Clutch. Hold on a second. I got one. Clutch RX. This is their newest oil. It prevents clutch slipping and clutch life. So if you want to get one of these, head to bloodlubricants.com now and use my code TMN25 to get 25% off site-wide. All right, one final thing before I get into the news. I got to promote it. I've only got a couple issues of or copies of issue number seven of my magazine left. Uh, issue number eight will be coming out in a couple weeks, but got to sell these puppies out now before I get issue number eight in, hopefully. If you haven't bought one, Head to my website, mxnetwork.com. Links in the description. All right, let's get into this video. All right, so Aaron Plessinger has had overall a fantastic year, uh, getting a win, holding the red plate for a couple rounds. For the most part, remaining consistent and holding his ground week after week. He did have a couple off weekends. Uh, it started with Glendale. He kind of had a struggle fest, inconsistent throughout the day. And then in Daytona, he crashed, uh, but he didn't sustain any injuries. Then Alabama, he had an eighth. Again, he was just on the struggle bus. So this kind of ruined his perfect streak consistency-wise from the beginning of the year. He was uh, between first and fifth, and then later in the year, sixth. So the other eight races he finished, uh, then those three I mentioned, are sixth place or better. That's pretty incredible. With that being said, he has dropped down two sixth in points after those rough rounds, uh, but that's only 10 points behind Tomac. But 50 behind Jet, so he's pretty far away from the red plate now. Either way, Plessinger still has the mindset of, hey, it's possible. Stay consistent, and we could rise back up there in points, whether it be first, second, third, fourth. Anything's better than what you're at right now. After the race, he spoke about this with Kellen Brower of Moto Online regarding his points deficit. Uh, here's his response. I started clicking him off at the end and and just came up short, man. I was like, I don't even know if it was a second. Mm. And, um, yeah, it feels good to to get back here and, and ride like that this weekend and and uh i don't know it was uh it's been a tough couple of weeks and it sucks that uh you know we're we're this far down in the points now but oh well you know yeah. it's uh, it's all good i can always rebound and ride good on the weekend and and it feel uh feel pretty good uh, he seemed to have a relatively positive mindset regarding his point situation and how to handle it uh, in the latter half of the season, he further expanded his mindset regarding points with Motocross Action Magazine on Sunday, saying, quote, I believe 100% that I can get back up there and challenge these guys. It just takes consistency. Consistency is going to be my friend these next couple of rounds, and if I can just get off to a good start, click off some good laps, stay up front, and keep those podium finishes coming, yeah, I think I can catch these guys and move up in the points, but it is not going to be easy. I 100% agree with AP. He has shown that he has the skill, and now he has to show us consistency. Uh, if he can manage to do that, I think he moves up to at least fourth in the championship, which would be his best finish season-wise on a 450 yet. So let's get an AP. The whole sport is rooting for you, man. All right, let's move on to Nate Thrasher. At the start of Saturday's 250 main event, Nate Thrasher found himself in a prime position to compete with championship leaders. As the winner of San Diego in late January, Thrasher had high hopes for the night. However, a significant crash during his Glendale heat resulted in him missing the main event. Uh, after a month of healing, he returned to Washington, uh, Seattle, Supercross to rejoin competition. During the Seattle main event, Thrasher emerged from the whole shot 
in fifth place, trailing behind the championship leaders, you know, Levi Kitchen, Jordan Smith, RJ Hampshire, and Julian Bomero was actually up there too. Initially, it seemed that the number 57 rider would be a strong contender uh, this weekend, possibly for a podium spot. However, he soon slipped out of the top five and ultimately finished in 10th place. So what happened to Nate? We were all watching and like, hey, this guy's really good. What the heck's going on here? Uh, following the event, Thrasher shared his thoughts in Yamaha's post-race recap, reflecting on his performance and challenges he faced during the race. Thrasher said, quote, it was definitely an eventful day. I came together with another guy and something happened to the clutch. So I was just kind of surviving from then on and did what I could do. It just sucks. I felt like I had just started riding well and starting moving up my way up through the field. And then not having a clutch on the rutted track was definitely not easy. We'll regroup and come back in St. Louis. The speed's there. We've just got to execute better. So riding without a clutch or damaged one is definitely not an easy feat. Uh, this would certainly explain how we dropped so far so quick to the field, uh, especially with how gnarly that track was. We all saw it, and if you look at the up-close pictures, man, I wouldn't even be able to roll around that track. So... At least he did damage control. Tenth isn't awful for not having a clutch the entire race, but definitely hurts his uh, points situation for the year. All right, on the MXGP side of things, we got Rowan van der Mosteig. More information on him. So I just spoke about the Fantic split with him yesterday, and I also mentioned that the Yamaha spot that's possibly open with Maxime Renault leaving. Well, it turns out he had his eyes set on another factory fill-in ride, and that is for Honda HRC. We might only be two rounds into the MXGP season, but there's already been plenty of injuries uh, with the likes of HRC Honda, Factory Yamaha, and JM Honda on the lookout for fill-in riders. GateDrop.com claims that HRC Honda have decided to snap up uh, Van de Mosteik as a fill-in rider after Fernandez recently had surgery on his ACL and will be out of action for a while. Last season, Tim Geyser got injured and HRC Honda didn't sign anybody up for a fill-in ride, but there wasn't a rider of his caliber available. It was kind of just smaller privateer level guys available at that time. So uh, the fact Honda HRC are currently developing the new prototype Honda, it makes sense to have another rider underneath the awning, testing the bike, learning the bike. Uh, not only will the Dutch rider have one of the best bikes in the MXGP paddock with the prototype 2025 Honda, but he'll also be under the watchful eye of Jackie Vimond, who is working with the HRC Honda riders this year. He could really help guide Van Amosdijk in what is his rookie MXGP class season. After a recent knee injury, we believe that Van de Mosteik will be able to get back on the bike this week, so testing will begin, but we'll have to wait and see if he's ready to return racing yet uh, for round three, which takes place next weekend uh, in Riola. So if this rumor is true, man oh man, that would be a step up for Rowan uh, from going to a guy who wasn't going to have a factory ride in his rookie MXGP season. He kind of got forced up with the age rule in MX2 uh, to getting a factory ride on a new team, Fantic, separating with them, and then going to ride for possibly the best team in the paddock, uh, Honda HRC. So that's an insane roller coaster of events there. Um, I think I'll learn a lot on this team. Hopefully Geyser can rub off on him a bit, teach him. Some of the tricks, uh, I think it'll be good there. It's awesome to see. Good luck with that guy. Well, it looks like the MXGP shakeup is straightening out. Today we got news of who will fill Fantic Factory Racing's 450 slot that Rowan van de Mosdijk left. And that rider is MXGP veteran Brian Bogers, who actually had no intent on racing MXGP this year. Uh, the press release from the team reads, Fantic Factory Racing MXGP is pleased to welcome Brian Bogers alongside Glenn Koldenhoff for the remainder of the 2024 season. Bogers will debut on the Fantic XXF 450 at the MXGP of Sardinia in Rio Losardo, April 7th and 6th. Brian Bogers scored his first GP podiums in the MX2 class in 2016 and 2017 and made an early switch to the Premier class in 2018, only 21 years old. After successfully overcoming a string of injuries, it was 2022 when the Dutchman enjoyed his best season thus far. Bogers placed sixth in the championship as one of the top-ranked riders and made his childhood dream come true with a superb GP win in the deep, punishing sand of Lamo, home of motocross. The 27-year-old from Eindenhoven will be looking to achieve more success in Fantic Factory colors. Brian Bogers said in the press release, quote, I am very, I am a very lucky guy at the moment because I never thought that I would still get the chance to race in the MXGP this season. Therefore, you can imagine that I don't only take this opportunity with both hands, but with both hands and feet. Thank you to Fantic Factory Racing MXGP for this amazing opportunity. I am very motivated and focused to let this work. I'm pumped to see it. Bogers is a fantastic rider and a veteran of the sport. He was one of those guys that was on the edge of falling out of uh, mainstream talk of the sport. He wasn't getting ride offers. He was kind of racing oddball races, and he didn't really have a future. So for Fantic to come out, 
reach out to him and bring him back into the sport. I hope he takes this opportunity and turns his career back around. Boger is an ext- is an extremely talented rider and a nice guy, so I'm going to be pumped to see him back on the line. Let me know what you guys think about that. And final story of the day, another HRC story in MXGP, uh, Tim Geyser. Speaking of Tim, he has been on the 2025 prototype Honda since November of last year, and we really haven't heard anything about it. I mean, we got the press release of what's changed on it, but we don't know how it handles how the guys feel about it. It, uh, it. Tim hasn't really spoke about it yet, so it's been hard to get any info on the bike, considering Tim Geyser is literally the only rider in the world riding it now, as Fernandez is out. So, finally, after this weekend's MXGP of Spain, a GateDrop.com reporter asked him in his post-race interview about the bike, what he thinks about it, and if he needs to work on it. Uh, here was Tim Geyser's response. Uh, and obviously, you've got the new prototype Honda. You de- made the debut in the International Italian Championship. How did you feel first jumping on the bike? And between then and now, have you made many changes to make it better? Uh, yeah, the new Honda is good, you know. Uh, I'm really happy and I felt immediately really comfortable on it. Uh, when I see it first time on it back in November last year. Um, we haven't really did too many changes since uh, since the races, you know, like that I did in the Italian Championship. Uh, because I was quite quick, comfortable on it, you know. Uh, we found a good base, uh, good setup and uh, yeah, we didn't change quite a lot. Of course, clickers here to here, you know, like uh, uh, from track to track. Obviously, you have to change, but like uh, nothing, not, nothing too big. Well, judging by the interview, it's pretty clear that he likes it, and it looks like he's g- uh, gelling with the bike on race day as well. Thus far in 2024, Geyser has finished fifth, first, second, second for third overall in MXGP of Argentina and second overall in MXGP of Spain. Pretty incredible start of the year. That's incredibly consistent. One tiny mistake from Prado, and Geyser has him. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this 2025 Honda prototype. Do you think Tim can win the championship with this new bike this year? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. All right, that's all I have for you guys in today's video. Thank you for watching. Go support my sponsor, Blood Lubricants. Links in the description and snatch a copy of my magazine while you're there. Again, links in the description as well. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.